Are you aware of America prior to 1619? 1619 is when a Dutch ship brought 20 Africans to America. These Africans were taken from their homeland. They were stolen from their homeland and brought to America. Here in America and Jamestown, Virginia is where they were sold. They were sold to the Americans. And prior to 1619, America did not take any part of slavery. They actually didn't believe in slavery and thought that slavery was a bad thing. However, once they took the 20 Africans over and they made them work, the deal was, and this is history speaking, work for seven years and after your seven years you will be given freedom. As we know, after those seven years or not even before the seven years, the Americans started to realize how the economy started to prosper. America was growing on the backs of Africans. And of course, um, there were other Americans, Caucasians, who were out there um, working side by side with the Africans, um, but they were the poor of the class. So if you were poor, you had to work with the black people. In return, with the hard work of Africans and some Caucasians who were basically poor Caucasians, America was built on the backbones of them. Because prior to 1619, America was under British rule. That's right, we were still under British rule in 1619. America is a stolen land, and it was built based on stolen people. How about that? When the first Africans arrived here in 1619, America saw that the economy was starting to thrive. We Africans were considered black gold because it bought, because they bought prosperity to the country. Again, black gold is what the first Africans were called when they originally came to this continent. However, they eventually lost their name as the years went on, and then they became the N-word. All nigger means is black in Spanish. It is a color. And as you know, we are not black, we are brown, just like the whites are not white. Africans were stolen. They were brought to America on a Dutch ship, Jamestown, Virginia, and here they were traded off promised freedom if they worked seven years. And as we know, that freedom never came because the Americans went back on their word. And eventually, they ended up adopting slavery and making slavery legal. Can you believe that? And if any slave tried to escape, it was punishable by death. Unbelievable. So you didn't have a right to want to be free. You didn't have a right to want to stand on your own two feet. And however, it was because of the hard work and dedication of those first 20 slaves that made the country what it is. And let's not forget that and let's understand that that is true and that is a fact. History shows that. People forget that. And people also forget that they were called black gold. Yes, black gold. Because they made America prosper. I just wanted to know if you knew that. And if you did not, then you do. All of that is written in my book, Sheep in the Midst of Wolves. Who's the sheep and who's the wolf? It all depends on perception. And that is a story. This is my diary that I wrote a couple of years ago. And I focused on my diary was, had enough information in it, shall I say, to, to share it with other people besides my family. So I published this diary. This book was published two years ago, um, prior to all of this. And um, I've never spoken about this chapter, Black Gold, only the people who read it would um, know the chapter, Black Gold. But I wanted to speak about it here today and shed light on it here today. Um, and it says, considering African American history, I want to I want to proclaim, as long as you know that I know that we belong here. Black gold was the term used in reference to the first Africans brought to America by the Dutch on a slave ship in Jamestown, Virginia, in 1619. The 20 Africans were promised freedom if they worked for seven years. Their labor helped to build the America the America economy. Before their arrival, America wasn't thriving, according to history.com. The country was constantly battling Native American warriors and was still under British rule. Our nation realized how prosperous the economy had grown since the arrival of the Africans and they decided to purchase more African slaves. This decision ultimately influenced America to recant their original agreement and Africans were forced to work beyond their initial seven years, beyond their seven years. The Africans were viable 
and considered black gold. I repeat that, the Africans were valuable and considered black gold. In 1641, slavery was legalized. They came here in 1619. They were prosperous. They labored. They helped build the economy so much. In 1641, slavery was legalized. Africans became property of their slave owners and they were treated like animals. They were never given a freedom as promised and eventually lost their original title as black gold and the N-word then took over. That is your history. That is the first chapter. That is an excerpt from my book, Sheep in the Midst of Wolves, Diary of a Single Mother. And I wrote this years ago. A couple years ago, not that long ago. I also wrote a chapter about freedom writers. If you guys remember the freedom writers, that is when Caucasians and African Americans rode the bus throughout the states and when they reached Alabama this way it gets really violent but not by the Freedom Riders part but by the racist Americans when they beat the Freedom Riders blacks and whites were beaten and some were even killed including the white people including the Caucasians the innocent Caucasians the Caucasians that wanted to help were beaten and some of them were even killed and in the end, when the cops came, guess who were arrested? The Freedom Riders and the injured Caucasians who ruled with the Freedom Riders who was writing for freedom. They were jailed. They were arrested. Not the racist Americans. Not the racist Americans who beat the Freedom Riders. Not the racist Americans who killed people on that bus. They were let go. Because this is America where racism is now part of the way of being. Let's also speak about sitting with it. I have a chapter in this book as well, an excerpt in this book as well, speaking about um, the sit-in movement. I'm sorry. The sit-in movement is when a bunch, bunch of peaceful protesters, a lot of them were college students, went into a racist part um, in the South and sat at the counter. The Caucasian racist, the racist Caucasians, threw milkshakes, threw water, threw food, and all types of things that they can get their hands on, on the people who sat on these stools in that restaurant. And, and a peaceful protester sat there. They didn't fight back. They allowed themselves to have food thrown on them. They were called names. They were poked and prodded. And some even hit. And they still did not fight back. The um, sit-in movement eventually spread it throughout all of the states. And many other people, many other nations were doing the same exact thing until eventually we were, we were able to go into restaurants and sit where we wanted to sit. And even through those peaceful demonstrations, guess who were arrested? The peaceful people who were arrested. And the racist people who hated people for their color, who hated the people who made America what it was, were not arrested, but in fact glorified by proclaiming to be non-biased. I think to this day, we, the people, can go through a situation and see that there are still um, biases in the criminal justice system. And it's a shame because uh, if you look at the history and look at what made America thrive, you would think that they would be grateful. That we all would be grateful. And see each other as a team. And not see each other as different. Because we are a team. I am African American, but my ancestors are African. And they were stolen from their land. And they were brought here against their will. And they were forced to work. And they were promised freedom after seven years. And they were never given that freedom. And we have a right to protest, we have a right to be angry, we have a right to want what's due to us. Uh, stolen people living on stolen land. Come on America, wake up and know your history. Just like, guess the Caucasians feel as though they belong, even though they stole the land. The Indians definitely belong, because it was, they were here before any of us. But in return, in all in all, this world, this land, this earth uh, belongs to no one. You will come, you will go. This is God's land. This is the universe's land. It belongs to everyone. Cosmopolitan. We are all one. We are all one nation. We are all one land. Look at the coronavirus. It starts way over in China, and the whole world is affected because we are one. It could have started in the United States, and the whole world would have been affected because we are one one land, one race, the human race. We have sub particles, sub products, you know. But we are all one. We are all earthlings, you know. We are all one. And until you realize that you are some sort of racist, when you start to divide and separate and try to say who's better, who's not, what's better, what's not, that's not a good thing. 
That is not healthy. That is not God. That is man's thinking. That is humankind's egotistic thinking. To think that something's better. To think someone's better. And I believe in fairness and equal opportunities. And I don't believe in police killings and killing people and pushing old men down on the steps and bashing out the windows of people's cars and killing innocent women and killing innocent kids and, and arresting our men and pinning crimes on them that we know they didn't do. Anthony Ray Hinton and all those other people who are wrongfully convicted in the prosecution knew they were innocent. Yes, racism goes deep, including to the law. It's a shame. It is a shame. This is our country. This is where we live. But this is not our world. This world belongs to the universe. But this is our country. This is where we live. And we're going to pre preach. We're going to speak. We're going to protest. I just ask that we do peaceful protests. Because all that rioting and stealing and breaking into buildings and burning things down, that's not going to get you anywhere. Violence don't create change. Peaceful protests. Going in with your head on straight. Thinking level-headed. Being level-headed. Thinking level-headed. Thinking level-headed. Being level-headed. Acting level-headed. That creates change. Breaking and stuff, that's not going to create change. I wouldn't even want to give you change. Myself, if I was behind, you want to think, you think that you can come and, and break a window, burn down a store, and I'm supposed to give you fairness? No, I wouldn't give it to you either. That's ignorance right there to do that and expect to get something in return. Grow up. It don't work that way. Keep your head on straight and ask for change the right way. All that looting, looting, all that rioting, I don't agree with it. That is not the way to do it. That is not the way to create change. But being quiet also do not create change. So we have to speak, we have to protest, we have to be out there, but we gotta do it peacefully. And we gotta keep on going. We gotta keep on going. We gotta keep on going because if we stop and if we let them take away, it will get worse. You give them an inch, they take a yard. But we wanna take our inch and we wanna turn our inch to a yard and a mile and to a milestone and let it spread as we already see it is spreading across and not just the United States. You see other nations are out, are out there protesting as well for black lives and matter. And we say black lives matter, not that any other lives don't matter, but the world act like black lives don't matter. So we chant black lives matter. We say police lives matter. Yeah, everyone's life matter. But police officers are being violently killed every single day for nothing. Matter because we are being killed every day for nothing. That's why black lives matter. We understand that all lives matter. But we saying this because you act like you don't understand that black lives matter. Okay? Black lives matter. We all matter. Black lives are being destroyed and killed every day. More than any other race. Hmm. See, I got a thought I'm not gonna say because some things need to be left in your head. You know, in the words of Maya Angelou, we rise, we rise, we will always rise. Please feel free to pick up my book, Sheep in the Midst of Wolves, and read about my story, read about my life, read about where I came from, read about where I'm going and where I am still going. I am Vanessa Bell Jackson. My book is Sheep in the Midst of Wolves. You can find it on Amazon. It is an independently published book, um, so you may find some errors, but this is my diary. This is my diary, and it is the truth about my history and where I came from and how I became who I am today. It's about racism and injustices throughout the United States and how I endured it. it. speaks about murder and death and the things that I've seen growing up in the projects of 13th Street. It speaks about my divorce. It's, it's, it speaks about my arrest. When I too was, was um, wrongfully arrested. Yeah, mm -hmm. it speaks about that as well. Which led me to write this book from going through some racism and um, unfairness in our criminal justice system. So um, if you can go out and support the book, thank you. If you can't, that's fine, just spread the word. Black Lives Matter. And we say that again because you people act like it don't. And when I say you people, I mean racist people. Okay? Black Lives Matter. Namaste.